Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. I'm Divya Jyoti Das. This is For the Love of Physics. And this is part two of problem solving in quantum mechanics. You see, I have received a lot of requests from you guys uh, to spend some time solving problems in quantum mechanics. Till now, we have had almost 27 lectures in quantum mechanics where I have gone in depth explaining different concepts of various topics in quantum mechanics. However, I have not focused my attention on problems. I have mostly been focusing my attention in theory. But if you're a student and you're in university, then if you go to an examination, if you appear in any competitive examination, the questions that come do not really ask you direct definitions or principles or statements. Majority of the questions are numerical problem solving based questions. You are given a problem of some scenario where you have some information and then based on all your understanding, you need to solve that problem and get an answer. So therefore, apart from knowing the concepts and the fundamentals of the subject of quantum mechanics, we also need to spend a little bit of time looking at the kinds of problems that are possible and how to go about solving them. I divided this thing into two parts in my earlier lecture. I talked about all these topics. But in today's class, we are going to do eight different questions from these topics. Valid wave functions, normalization, probability, Schrodinger equation, expectation values. These are important topics. The questions themselves are not really that difficult, but you need to familiarize yourself with them at least once. If you can go through all these questions and if you can solve them, then uh, you should rest assured that you will be able to, uh, you know, solve further unseen problems, maybe in some future examination. But if you're not able to do that, if you find difficulty as you go through this video, trying to understand how we are solving these problems, then that means you need to devote more time to this subject. So this is going to be a little bit of a lengthy video because I'll be solving all these questions. Uh, so you can pause the video whenever you like. You can take out your notebook try to solve a question on the spot and then you can cross check your answer with my answer and you can see how it is different. And this exercise will help you uh, develop that skill of problem solving. So let us start with questions involving valid wave functions. You see, I took a couple of lectures where uh, we discussed wave functions and more specifically, what are the valid wave functions? You see, there are certain kinds of wave functions which might be mathematical solutions of the Schrodinger equation, but they do not represent actual physical particles because they do not satisfy certain criteria that are very important. You see, it is not sufficient for a wave function solution to just be a solution of the Schrodinger equation. It has to satisfy some other, you know, properties like Born's statistical interpretation. Um, you know, it has to satisfy properties of being, uh, you know, differentiable, continuous, its derivatives being continuous and differentiable, etc, etc. So based on those uh, criteria, we can look either at the visual representation of a wave function or mathematical expression of a wave function to get an idea whether something can be allowed in the context of quantum theory or not. So in this question, a particle of energy E moves in one dimension under the influence of potentials Vx. So if E is greater than Vx for some range of x, which of the following graphs can represent a bound state? All right. So basically we have a problem where a particle is in some kind of a bound state and which one of these physical, uh, we, they have not given us any clue about uh, the nature of the potential or anything, just that it's in a bound state. So which one of these graphs can best represent the wave function solution. So what we can do is we can start with negation. We can look at the wave functions. If we find something that is completely not allowed, then we can negate them. Yeah, we can sort of say, oh, this is not possible, something like that. So if you look at, let's suppose uh, I have another question. Let this, let me keep that below. So let's look at this option number D. You see the option number D? You see what's wrong with this particular graph? I mean, I mean, by wrong, I mean, what is it that's something that cannot be possible for a physical quantum mechanical particle? You see, we do not allow wave functions that are discontinuous. 
and there is a discontinuity in this particular graph. Discontinued, discontinuous uh, graphs are a little bit difficult for us to accept because discontinuity means we don't really know what the probability of the particle being found there is. It means its derivative becomes infinite. It means the momentum at that location probably also becomes infinity. So this is not allowed. All right. What about option number B? Is option number B possible? It's just an oscillatory function. But the problem with option number B is that it is not normalizable because it's oscillatory throughout the x-axis. We are already told in the problem that it represents a bound state wave function. So essentially what it means is that option number B represents a wave function that is oscillatory even at x is equal to plus minus infinity. Now when we do that we can't really normalize that wave function and that is not possible. For objects or particles in bound states the wave function should go to zero at x is equal to plus minus infinity. So therefore this is not possible. And the same case goes for option number C. Here the wave function is actually going to infinity as x tends to plus minus infinity. You see that is also not possible because if I try to find integrate and find the probability it will come out to be very well infinity basically that's not allowed you know so this as a wave function is not allowed what about option number a the option number a has no discontinuity as we can see it seems to be a very simple continuous flowing graph probably has derivatives which are simple uh, it seems to go to zero as x tends to plus minus infinity so out of all these possible scenarios it seems that option number a is the correct answer so just by looking at a visual representation of a wave function, a large number of times we can figure out whether some wave function is allowed or not. If you have discontinuities, if you have, uh, you know, um, uh, functions going to infinity at in, uh, x is equal to infinity or functions oscillating at x is equal to infinity, we, we have to reject them, you know, and uh, what's left is the correct answer. All right, let's move forward to a similar question. However, in this next problem, we are not given a visual representation of the wave function instead we are given a mathematical equation associated with the wave function so in this problem we have four different options and i know that this problem might uh, feel a little difficult for some students because instead of having a visual graphical representation we have like mathematical expressions so how do you analyze mathematical expressions without uh, actually seeing how the function looks like. We might not have access to some graphical, uh, you know, simulation in the examination. So somehow with pen and paper, uh, we will have to figure out which one of them are allowed and which one of them are not. So let's look at this first function, which is n e to the power minus alpha r upon r. Can you think of some scenario in which we can reject this option? Well, if you look at the function, one thing becomes very, very clear. If r is equal to 0, or if I say r is tending towards 0, then the wave function, what happens to the wave function? It tends towards infinity. So basically, the, op, the wave function blows up. Wave function blows up to infinity at r is equal to 0. We cannot have a wave function blowing up because if a wave function blows up somewhere, it doesn't really make much sense. What is the probability of the particle being found there? Right? It, how does it make sense? It doesn't. So therefore, this option is not allowed. A wave form function cannot go to infinity anywhere. It cannot blow up anywhere. All right. Now, next, what about option number 2? Psi is equal to n 1 minus e to the power minus alpha r. Can you think of any reason why this uh, wave function would not be, let's suppose, allowed or possible? Uh, well, let's check. I mean, we can check at different uh, values whether this wave function is allowed or not allo allowed. So one thing that we can check is what happens to the wave function r, let's suppose r is equal to r tending to infinity. Okay. You can't really write, write equals to infinity, but tending to infinity, but just for simplicity, I'm writing infinity here. It's tending to infinity. Then what happens to this wave function? Okay, this is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus alpha dot infinity. What does it approach to? This equals 
what x actually this equals z n so at r is equal to infinity the wave function is constant which is not possible function has to go to zero you know as r tends to infinity the wave function should go to zero so therefore this is also not allowed because if at r is equal to infinity the wave function is non zero that means we cannot normalize it properly make sense all right so essentially what we are trying is we are just looking at all possible scenarios where we can actually reject a wave function either the wave function blows up either the wave function cannot be normalized you know either the wave function has a discontinuity or something like that so we are trying to look at various scenarios now what about option number c if we look at option number c all right let's look at the different kinds of possibilities and what happens at r is equal to 0 if you look at r is equal to 0 the wave function how does it behave at r is equal to 0 so at r is equal to 0 n e to the power minus alpha dot 0 e to the power minus beta so r 0 means x y z they are all 0 so this is also basically equal to 0 so this comes out to be n which is perfectly fine at r is equal to 0 wave function can be positive not a problem so this is fine fine with us what about r is equal to positive infinity now in this kind of a scenario if you look at this expression e to the power minus alpha positive infinity e to the power minus beta so this also of course would be positive infinity uh, this comes out to be it tends towards 0 so this comes out to be 0 right now the wave function at x y z tending to infinity tends to 0 is perfectly fine with us no problem whatsoever if you look at r tending to let's suppose uh, minus infinity what happens now this is a little bit tricky minus infinity because uh, if you look at the expression this is equal to n e to the power minus so this becomes plus alpha and then this becomes uh, minus beta x square so i should just infinity square plus infinity square plus infinity square now of course if you look at this expression doesn't everything seems to blow up to positive infinity mm, everything seems to blow up but just think of it as tending to okay just think of it as taking a large value here so if you take a very large value which function increases more I mean if you take if, if x tends to a very large number and y tends to a very large number and z tends to a very large number then which one of these blow up quicker are you getting what I'm saying so it seems that this is an exponential rise right this is an exponential decay so on one hand we have an exponential rise and one on another hand we have an exponential decay so by looking at these expressions it seems that the second term is going to dominate here you know as x y and z tend to infinity the second term which is the exponential decay is going to dominate which means that this is going to go to zero which means that ultimately the wave function goes to zero at x is equal to negative infinity which is perfectly fine with us okay so it seems that out of all these uh, options c seems to be reasonable what about the last option option number d let's check that also so if we look at option number d which essentially means that it is a positive constant for r less than capital r and zero for r greater than capital r okay so you have psi is equal to positive value for r less than capital r and zero for r less than capital r sorry r greater than capital r so it seems to be a discontinuous function don't you think i mean if i draw a graph here if i draw some kind of a graph like this this is small r this is the wave function then it seems that for r if this is like small r is equal to capital r then it is zero till here and it's positive here so clearly there's a discontinuity here discontinuous all right so again we cannot really allow this to be a practical wave function for our scenario so it seems that 
the logical answer is option number C. So the option number C is the logical answer. So you can get questions like these where you might be either given like some kind of a visual or graphical representation of a wave function or the mathematical expression corresponding to wave functions and then you might be asked which of one of them are allowed or not. So you'll have to check all these conditions whether they are discontinuous, whether their derivatives exist, whether you know are they are normalizable, whether or not they blow up and by doing that you can sort of cancel out the ones which does not meet the criteria and whatever left is the correct answer. All right. Now talking about wave functions and normalization, there are questions that most of you will see even in university examinations where you will be required to normalize a wave function. You see normalization of a wave function is very important because not only the wave function has to be a solution of the Schrodinger equation, it must satisfy the Born statistical interpretation in the sense that the uh, probability of the particle being found in the entire universe must come out to be equal to 1. So therefore the multiplicative factor that is uh, associated with the wave function should be such that the probability of the particle being found in the entire universe comes out to be 1. So that is a very important criteria. So let's look at this question. Normalize the wave function to find n. So the wave function is given to us n e to the power minus alpha x for x greater than 0 and e to the power uh, alpha x if x is less than 0. So it seems like a very simple interesting kind of a wave function. If you are interested in a graphical representation it might look something like this. So for x greater than 0 the wave function is essentially a exponential decay something like this right but for x less than 0 it is a kind of an exponential increase so which is also look something like this so this is some kind of a wave function probably we have but let's try to normalize it so the process of normalization itself is very simple there isn't much uh, to it except for the fact that the wave function should satisfy the bond statistical interpretation which means that if we integrate whatever wave function is given to us mod square dx in the entire universe for 1d case from minus infinity to plus infinity it should come out to be equal to 1 that's it since the wave function has been uh, sort of uh, demarcated here uh, now of course you have to keep in mind that the function that I have taken uh, is a sort of a very unique function uh, it is a solution of the Schrodinger equation for a very unique case. I think this represents a solution for delta function potential. So this does have a certain problem associated with it, which is that at x is equal to 0, it's sort of a derivative uh, is sort of a, you know, goes to infinity. But, but we'll leave that here. These are some theoretical problems where some of the uh, problems has certain exceptions associated with it. Uh, because delta function itself is not a realistic potential. Delta function is just a mathematical function that uh, we we sometimes assume a delta function well to be a potential well and then we look at uh, the wave function solution there. So, so don't worry about that here. It's just a mathematical solution to a particular problem. But still, if we impose this condition of normalization, then what happens? So first we must look from minus infinity to plus infinity. What is this? N e to the power minus alpha x there is no complex number so it remains as it is n um, psi star psi so n e to the power minus alpha x dx all right and then we go from uh, again 0 to infinity same I write the same expressions that n e to the power no from minus infinity to 0 right from minus infinity to 0 I should have positive this is positive right from 0 to infinity I have negative minus alpha x and e to the power minus alpha x dx is equal to 1. So whatever follows is just mathematical calculations from this point onwards. Let's do it and see what we get. Uh, I hope n is a real number because by looking at the options it seems that n is a real number otherwise there's a possibility it could be complex also in that case I have to take n mod square but by looking at the option it seems it's real. So I'm just going to take n square and then you have e to the power 2 alpha x dx from minus infinity to 0 plus again n square 0 to infinity you have e to the power minus 2 alpha x dx is equal to 1. Let's continue the calculations and see what we get as a final answer. 
we have n square so 1 upon 2 alpha e to the power 2 alpha x from minus infinity to 0 plus n square 1 upon minus 2 alpha and then you have e to the power minus 2 alpha x from 0 to infinity is equal to 1. So this becomes n square 1 upon 2 alpha. So this is e to the power 0 means 1 minus e to the power minus infinity. So it's 1 minus 0 plus or minus I should say n square upon 2 alpha. Here e to the power minus infinity is 0 minus e to the power 0 is 1. All right. So again, by simplifying, what do we get? We are near the end here. n square upon 2 alpha minus minus plus n square upon 2 alpha is equal to 1. So this is n square upon alpha is equal to 1 or n is equal to root over alpha is the correct answer in this scenario. Okay. So option number D is the correct answer. Okay. So it is possible that you might be asked to normalize some wave function either as a question or might be part of a different question where normalization is necessary. Then you can follow this simple steps to get the answer. Let's move ahead to the next question. All right. So this is a question that is based on probability. Okay. So we did questions related to wave functions. This is a question that is related to probability. How to find the probability of a particle? Whose wave function is given to us. The wave function of a particle trapped in a space between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L is given by this expression. What is the probability that the particle will be found between this and this? Now, the Born statistical interpretation gives us a very straightforward, uh, you know, method of calculating the probability of a particle being found in a region uh, whose wave function is known to us. Okay, and it seems that this wave function is normalized. So, the probability that the particle is being found in a certain region between 0 and L by 2 comes out to be psi x mod square dx as simple as that. So this comes out to be 0 L by 2 and this seems the function is real. So you don't have to worry much about it. So 2 upon L and here you get sin square pi x upon L dx. So again the problem is just mathematical at this point. We have to solve it. So how can we solve it? To solve it, you can apply, you know, that cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square theta. Therefore, sine square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta times half. So if we apply this here, this becomes 2 upon L times half integration of 1 minus cos 2 pi x upon L dx you know, 0 and L by 2. So what do we get here then 1 upon L and then here we have integration of dx between 0 and L by 2 and then we have integration of cos 2 pi x upon L dx between 0 and L by 2. So this comes out to be 1 by L this is just x at this point between 0 and L by 2 and this is sine and we have 2 pi x upon L times here I will get 2 pi upon L between 0 and L by 2. Okay, Applying the integrations I should get something like 1 upon L. So what is this? This is L by 2 minus L by 2 pi. What is sine 2 pi upon L into L by 2? So this comes out to be sine uh, sin pi, right? Sine pi minus sine 0. Now what is sine 0? Sine 0 is 0. Sine pi is 0. So therefore, this comes out to be 1 by L times L by 2 is equal to half. So the probability of the particle being found for this wave function between 0 and L by 2 is half. Now, some of you would probably uh, recognize this function. This function actually turns out to be the wave function for an infinite square well potential. And uh, it corresponds to the ground state. So the ground state looks something like this. So for half the 
the region, the probability of the particle being found is half. Anyways, I didn't want to go into that. It's just looked uh, at this problem from this perspective. All right, one more interesting problem on probability. Let's go. Consider a particle whose normalized wave function is given to you where alpha is a constant. And this wave function is 2 alpha root over alpha x e to the power minus alpha x if x is greater than 0 and 0 if x is less than 0. Find out the value of x where probability density is maximum. Find out the value of x where probability density is maximum. What does it mean? You see, if you look at a probability density of any kind of a problem, uh, it might, uh, it can change, right? If you look at psi mod square, it can change. You don't really know how it is changing, something like this. So how do you find that region where the probability density is maximum? Well, we use this mathematical tool called extremization. If you are interested in finding out the region or the point at which a function has its maximum value, you take its derivative and make it equal to zero. And that should give you the point. So that's what we are going to do here. Okay. So they have given as a wave function 2 alpha root over alpha x e to the power minus alpha x. And we are only interested in x greater than zero. Okay. So it's clear that I my, I'm mistaken with this graph. So let's suppose it starts with x is equal to zero here. Okay, x greater than zero. So what is the probability? The probability is at any given point is psi x mod square is equal to four alpha square into alpha is alpha cube x e to the power minus, or I should say x square e to the power minus 2 alpha x. Oh, it seems to be quite, it's a very complicated mathematical expression. We have to do some calculations here. So to find out that region, or I should say point, at which the probability density is maximum, right? Probability density is maximum, that's what they're asking. So to find the point at which the probability density the probability density has a maxima all right has a maxima to hum kya karenge dp upon dx will put it as zero Okay, dp upon dx will put it as 0. So, what should we have then? So, d upon dx of 4 alpha cube x square e to the power minus 2 alpha x, we put this as 0. So, if we put this as 0, I should get the extreme point. All right, let's do the calculations and see. So, first I will get 8 alpha cube x e to the power minus 2 alpha x. Second term I'll get as uh, 4 into 2, 8 minus 8 basically. 4 uh, minus 8 alpha cube x square e to the power minus 2 alpha x. I think an alpha will be there, alpha to the power 4, something like this, alpha to the power 4 is equal to 0. So if I do for the calculations, 8 alpha cube x e to the power minus 2 alpha x is equal to 8 alpha to the power 4 x square e to the power minus 2 alpha x. I hope I'm not making any mistake. So 8 and 8 gets cancelled. Alpha cube, uh, only alpha remains on this side. x remains here. e to the power minus 2 alpha x is this. So therefore, this comes out to be x is equal to 1 upon alpha. That's it. Done. So at x is equal to 1 upon alpha, you will have the probability density which is maximum. Now you might say, okay, how do we know it's maximum? It's just an extreme point. It could be minima also. You are correct. So why don't you give do a homework? Please check what happens at d2p upon dx2 for x is equal to 1 upon alpha. Would you like to do that? 
you can pause the video and you can check the value of this particular quantity you will find that this actually is a negative number what does it signify so whenever we have a maxima the second order derivative at that point is negative the first order derivative is a zero second order derivative is a negative please check okay i'm moving forward to the next question so this next question has to do with expectation value of energy okay the wave function of a quantum mechanical particle is given by this this is basically a linear combination of eigenfunctions okay so the wave function of a quantum mechanical particle is given by this where phi 1x and phi 2x are eigenfunctions of the corresponding energies minus 1 electron volt and minus 2 electron volt respectively what is the expectation value of energy of phi x dekhi what's happening here we have a system which has eigenfunction solutions so what do you mean by eigenfunction solutions so essentially a quantum mechanical particle can be in different energy levels so eigenfunctions are the wave function solutions you can say for those distinct energy levels right so for this system you have eigenfunction solutions on one hand you have let's suppose phi 1x okay and what is the energy level of that it is minus 1 electron volt and another eigenfunction you have phi 2x and what is the energy level associated with that minus 2 electron volt so there are two energy levels and two distinct states in this quantum mechanical system so what is the expectation value of energy which means what is the average value of energy okay so keep in mind that this is actually general wave function state for this given system all right so we have been given a linear combination or a general sort of a eigenstate or so, sorry wave function state comprising of the eigenstates for a given system so we need to check for normalization i'm not talking about the normalization of phi 1 and phi 2 i'm talking about the normalization of this superposition of states essentially which is also necessary okay for correct calculations so is it normalized is psi x normalized well how do we check because if you look at psi x it looks something like this c1 phi 1x plus c2 phi 2x so if i want to check for normalization in terms of the proportions of phi 1 and phi 2 in this particular uh, linear combination then what we are interested in is the summation of the squares of these coefficients summation of ci square which is essentially c1 square plus c2 square this should come out to be equal to 1 so what is c1 square 3 by 5 so this comes out to be 9 by 25 what is c2 square 4 by 5 square is 16 upon 25 it comes out to be equal to 1 so yes it is normalized so we don't have to worry about that now what is the expectation value of energy of this system see what happens is that in this quantum mechanical system because it's quantum mechanics it's weird in its own way in the sense that the particle can be in energy level first energy level particle can be in second energy level there are different probabilities associated with the particle being in different energy levels okay so c1 square essentially gives us an idea about the probability associated with the particle being in the first energy level and c2 square essentially gives us an idea about the probability of the particle being found in the second energy level so what is the expectation value or the average value of energy well that is very easily calculated by taking the probability associated with the particle being in the first energy level times the energy of the first energy level plus the probability of the particle being found in the second energy level times the energy of the second energy level that's it quite simple so this comes out to be 9 upon 25 this is minus 1 electron volt this comes out to be 16 upon 25 this is minus 2 electron volt so what is this uh, this comes out to be minus 9 upon 25 minus 32 upon 25 so minus 32 minus 9 is minus 
41 upon 25 electron volt is the answer which is option number A. Not very difficult. You will get questions like these. You might get a system which has multiple energy levels. So therefore you will have multiple eigenstates and you will have a general wave function which is a linear combination of these eigenstates and you might be asked what is the average value of energy and that is how you do. You multiply the probability of the particle being in any one distinct energy level with that corresponding energy level and then you do that individually and find out the average. That's it. All right. All right. This is the next question on uh, expectation values of momentum, but it's a little bit of a, I should say, not so easy question, a little advanced. Okay. Why? You see, they are given a particle which is represented by a normalized wave function. Fine between minus a to a, it has this uh, expression and zero otherwise. What is the uncertainty in momentum? Okay, how do you do questions like these? It's a little bit tricky. So they have given us a normalized wave function. They're asking us what is the uncertainty in momentum? You see, there's a very simple concept or a technique that can be used whenever you are given a wave function and you are required to find out the uncertainty in momentum or uncertainty in position. And that is, you simply do this, okay? The uncertainty in momentum is simply, so you use the expression for variance, okay? Which is the expectation value of momentum square minus square of the expectation value of momentum over root over, that's it. You do this, you get the expectation value of position. If, if for the, uh, sorry, for momentum. If you are asked for position, you can do the similar fashion. But here the challenge is to actually find out the expectation value of P square and the expectation value of P separately. Only then we can actually put it here and get the answer. So let's do that. They have given us a wave function. Let's first find the expectation value of momentum. Now, if you have seen my lectures on expectation values, you know that I have derived the expectation value of momentum uh, in a quite lengthy manner. But there's a formula that you have to memorize, there's no way around it, is you integrate the wave function and then you sandwich this operator which is minus iota h cross d upon dx between psi and psi star and then you integrate between minus infinity and plus infinity. That's the formula. So essentially this is the operator corresponding to momentum. You sandwich it between the psi and psi star. It's just like a sandwich, you know. You put cheese between two bread pieces, so this is something that you can do or vegetables or whatever, tomato, cucumber or whatever. So the, you sandwich the operator here and, uh, and then that, that gives you the ex uh, expectation value of momentum. So if I plug in our expressions for uh, this thing, the wave function, so this is root 15 upon a square minus x square upon 4 a to the power 5 up by 2 and then you have minus iota h cross d upon dx again root 15 a square minus x square upon 4 a to the power 5 by 2 dx okay so if i do that what do i get so i take it out some of these things 15 upon 16 a to the power 5 by 2 and uh, I also take minus iota h cross outside. So we are left with a square minus x square and if I integrate d by dx of a square minus x square, this should give me minus 2x. So essentially I should have x and minus here and this should become into 230. Now I do not want to integrate the whole expression because it's uh, quite lengthy. But if you take a look at this expression, now we should get the answer. I mean, what is this expression? It's a odd function. It's an odd function. Now, there is a property of odd functions that whenever you integrate odd functions between minus infinity to plus infinity, what do you get? You get zero. All right. You integrate an odd function between minus infinity to plus infinity, you get 0. So the answer here, expectation value of momentum is 0. But just because expectation value of momentum is 0, it doesn't necessarily mean 
then the expectation value of momentum square is also going to be 0. So, we will we'll look at that. So, what about the expectation value of p square? So, when you find out expectation value of p square, what do you do? You take psi star and then you sandwich the momentum operator square. So, d by dx square. Okay. Square simply means the operator operated onto the operator operated onto the wave function following it. So, this will look like what? Well, this looks like uh, again, let me write this thing down again. So, can I copy paste it? I do not want to write everything over and over again. Let me copy paste this expression here. Save some time and effort. Okay, yeah, done. Copy paste it here equals. So, but this is a square here. Since this is a square, now I can simplify it further. So, this is 15 upon 16 a to the power 5 by 2. All right, integration and this should be uh, minus h cut square I think and this should should be a square minus x square d2 upon dx2 a square minus x square dx. I think this should be it. Okay. So, what if you integrate sorry differentiate d by dx or d2x upon dx2 of a square minus x square this comes out to be d by dx of minus 2x which comes out to be minus 2. All right. So, therefore, this what do I get here? I should get minus minus will become plus. So, I will have 15 into 2. So, I should have 30 h cut square upon 16 a to the power 5 by 2 integration of a square minus x square dx. That is it from minus infinity plus infinity. By the way, function only exists between minus a to plus a. So, I should now change the limits to minus a to plus a. Okay. Now, if I do that, then I think I should get the answer, right? So, this should be 15 h cross square upon 4 a to the power 5 by 2 a cube uh, or I should say a square x between minus a and plus a minus x cube upon 3 between minus a and plus a. Okay, just let me wrap up the calculations. This should become a square a minus minus a is a plus a so twice a minus 1 by 3. So, x cube a cube minus or plus a cube comes out to be 2 a cube. Okay, so this comes out to be 15 h cross square upon 4 a to the power 5 by 2. So, this is 2 a cube minus 2 by 3 a cube. So, this answer finally becomes 15 h cross square upon 4 a to the power 5 by 2 and 3 and times 2 and this is 3 minus 1 2 by 3 into 2 by 3 a cube. All right. So, this is 5, 2 to 4 gets cancelled and this is equal to 5 h cross square and a to the power 5 by 2 minus 3 is 5 minus 6. I should say, I think at some point I might have made a small mistake. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it happens. Uh, as you're doing calculation, sometimes uh, you you miss, you make a small silly mistake, and that uh, takes away all the effort, especially in an examination. All your effort goes to zero if you make a silly mistake. I have had a very long day, and my brain is not really working that well. I guess. So you the, you, you multiply this with this, I should get a to the power five. Again, a to the power 5, a to the power 5, a to the power 5, and a to the power 5. Again, now it makes sense. This is a square, right? So, another silly mistake I should have had 8 here. Okay, I'm very sorry. You know, it's better I make these mistakes 
rather you make these mistakes uh, in the examinations okay this is 8 so this comes out to be 2 so this is 5 all right now I have these two expressions so I need the uncertainty in momentum the uncertainty in momentum is p square expectation value minus p expectation value square root over so what is this this is 5 h cut square upon I think this is 2 a square minus 0 root over so this is equal to root 5 upon 2 h cross upon a right I think this should be the answer yep option number d root over 5 upon 2 h cross upon a option number d is the correct answer for the uncertainty in the momentum for the given wave function solution so you might get questions of uh, you know expectation values or you might also get questions on uncertainty in momentum or position for that you use this concept but you have to find out the expectation value of both the quantity and the quantity square all right finally we have this last question that is based on the schrodinger equation okay we have done questions on uh, valid wave functions expectation values probabilities um, you know expectation values of uh, you know uncertainties of momentum so this is finally a question on schrodinger equation the wave function of a spinless particle of mass m in a 1d potential is given by this expression corresponding to an eigenvalue of this what is the potential so they have given us a wave function solution they have given us the eigenvalue associated with it they are asking us what is the potential and whenever you have these kinds of questions where uh, either the wave function is given and the potential is given and they are asking you the eigenvalue or let's suppose the potential is given or the eigenvalue is given they are asking you the wave function or let's suppose the wave function is given and the eigenvalue is given they are asking you the potential you just plug everything into the Schrodinger equation and the unknown will come out from their solution okay so what is the Schrodinger equation this is the showing equation right so I should say e naught I think that would be better this thing so what is this so this is nothing but minus h cross square upon 2m d2 psi upon dx2 plus v psi is equal to e naught psi which is given to us all right the v is the unknown here okay now let's plug in psi and see what we get I think that should uh, quite simply give us the answer minus h cross square upon this so d by dx of d by dx of what is the wave function a e to the power minus alpha square x square plus v psi is equal to e naught psi okay let's first solve the first term and see what we get if i solve the first term this comes out to be what this comes out to be uh, minus a alpha square okay minus a alpha square twice x e to the power minus alpha square x square I think this is correct right again I have to differentiate it one more time if I do that this essentially becomes plus 2 and 2 gets cancelled so h cross square a alpha square upon 2m d by dx of x e to the power minus alpha square x square plus v psi is equal to e naught psi okay let's further solve this and see what we get h cross square alpha square a upon 2m now here i have uh, minus alpha square dot 2x minus alpha square dot 2x and then again x, x square e to the power minus alpha square x square we apply the chain rule and see what we get plus e to the power minus alpha square x square 
okay plus v psi is equal to e naught psi all right we have plugged in the wave function solution did the derivatives two times and then this is what we get so now how, how can we simplify to find out this unknown right they are asking us to find out the potential this is the unknown here so what do i do now well we can make a comparison of coefficients of the functions but to do that i have to simplify it further let's simplify it then all right so h cross square and then you have alpha square upon 2m let's take this out so here i have uh, 2 alpha square x square plus 1 i should they should be minus sign here a e to the power minus alpha square x square okay i want to separate the psi here okay so what is this this is a psi right a e to the power minus alpha square x square is a psi the wave function so i'm, I'm just going to write finally in this particular manner that uh, h cross square alpha square upon 2m 1 minus 2 alpha square x square psi plus v psi is equal to e naught psi but e naught is given to us e naught is h cross square alpha square upon m so h cross square alpha square upon m psi so let's bring uh, these two terms first and the third term this side so v psi is equal to what do i get i get h cross square alpha square upon 2m that becomes common i have 1 minus 2 alpha square x square so this becomes minus 1 plus and this becomes plus 1 right so this gets cancelled and all we are left is h cross square alpha square upon 2m times 2 alpha square x square where 2 and 2 gets cancelled and finally we have something do we have something uh, let me check if i can simplify this further by substituting with e naught so what is e naught e naught is equal to h cross square alpha square upon m so h cross square alpha square upon m if i substitute it here i get e naught okay so 2 and 2 i don't think i should cancel it here i guess i think i should just write this as alpha square e naught x square so if i just write this as i think this is not 2m is this 2m can i check yeah, yeah it's 2m just a moment but it should have got cancelled <laughs> i had a very long day you know my, I, i'm making some silly mistakes at the very end of the lecture please do forgive me i had a very long day and sometimes in mathematical calculations i do end up making silly mistakes the, the, i should have cancelled out two here so if i cancel out two the two vanishes here and then the two vanishes here and then i have two here okay so then this becomes two e naught alpha square x square and psi psi right so by comparison with the coefficients i get finally the potential v x is equal to 2 e naught alpha square x square so these are some you know uh, standard problems of how to solve Schrodinger equation, finding our expectation values uh, of energy, momentum, probability, and then wave function and all these things. So I hope you have learned something from today's video and uh, you got a little bit of an idea what are the questions possible from these topics. You see problem solving is very important and getting good at problem solving is very important and avoiding making silly mistakes is also important. You see, sometimes it happens to me, it happens to the best of us we end up making silly mistakes here and there, a plus here, a minus sign here, I forgot to put this symbol here or there, and then that ruins the whole uh, answer. You lose the whole marks. So therefore, getting good at problem solving and avoiding silly mistakes is very important. Please keep that in mind. I'll see you in the next video with some other topic. That's it for today. I'm Divya Jodidas. This is For the Love of Physics. Take care. Bye-bye.